Good afternoon and welcome to part three in a series of IM Group SQL Server 2012 webinars. In this session, we'll take a look at two key areas of functionality for data management that have been made available in this new version of SQL Server. Our main areas of focus will be the new data quality services component and enhancements made to Master Data Services, Microsoft's Master Data Management tool, including its integration with data quality services. A little housekeeping before um, we begin. Uh, each of your microphones have been automatically muted just to ensure that everybody gets the best audio experience. Due to the volume of attendees, we'll be taking questions via email after this session. So please do let us know if there is, are some specific uh, scenarios that you'd like us to explore further. Finally, can I ask you all to hit the full screen um, icon on your GoToMeeting toolbar to make sure you get the best view of the slides and demonstrations. Over the next 45 minutes or so, I'll share with you a brief introduction to IAM Group, some background to the relevant new features of SQL Server 2012, formerly known as Denali, and drill into master data services improvements and data quality services, including live demonstrations. Many of you are already IAM Group customers, but for those of you who aren't familiar with who we are, IAM Group provides strategies, services and solutions for information management that help our customers cut costs, improve profitability and differentiate themselves from their competitors. We help our customers solve complex data warehouse and reporting challenges, deliver content management, collaboration and search solutions with SharePoint and provide a 360 degree view of customers and partners with CRM solutions that can be deployed on premise, in cloud or with a hybrid approach. We provide our customers with an end-to-end -end service that spans information management strategy through to first, second and third line support. And we do all that with our teams based here in London, Manchester, India and New York. We have very strong vendor relationships, not least with Microsoft, who have recognised our innovation and ability to deliver real business value to our customers by awarding us their Global Information Management Partner of the Year Award for four years running. Okay, SQL Server 2012. There are three principles or pillars to the 2012 solution. Enabling mission critical performance and availability at low TOC. Unlocking new insights with pervasive data discovery across the organization. Creating business solutions fast on your terms across server and private and public cloud. Today, we're gonna to drill into unlocking new insights with pervasive data discovery for which a number of re uh, related elements of data management are enablers. The more mature these elements are within an organization, the easier delivery of business value becomes. Having said that, the maturity of these elements should not become paramount and should not exceed their worth. The value is gained from the insight that is delivered after all. Data governance combines standards, processes, and accountability to create a framework for making consistent system funding, design, and implementation decisions. Governance should also consider the full life cycle of data, including its archiving through to its ultimate disposal. Data architecture enables the organic development of an enterprise data model, for example, defines standards for the types of data stores, whether operational data stores, warehouses, data marks, etc. Defines standards on how many individual data models will conform, and in essence ensuring that data can be integrated and manipulated um, to meet any business requirement across an organization. Database management, well one size doesn't always fit all, but standardization is viable within the area of data warehouses and business intelligence. But the essence of this platform is a long way removed from traditional, traditional trans uh, transactional processing. The ancillary tools, for example, ETL, ad hoc analysis, etc., that will best leverage the business insight platform should also all be standardized with clear use cases. Data, data security, access control remains fundamental. However, Ensuring data remains within a controlled environment is critical and for this to be of value. When data is legitimately needed outside a controlled environment, such as supply to a third party, the masking of commercial and personal sensitive data is legality, which should also be fully considered. Master data management. The understanding of audit information will drive improvements in data and in systems. Definition information will help drive quality and business understanding. And finally, data quality. Data management systems can only control the systematic elements of quality. Continuing evaluation and management of a standardization, completeness, accuracy, enrichment, context, deduplication, and currentness of data, for example, 
are all critical for the provision of quality data within an information environment. All these elements coming together will contribute to a trusted MDM, data warehouse and business insights solutions. Okay, so let's focus on SQL Server. What SQL Server 2012 got to offer in this space? Well, of course, 2005 delivered a rich level of very capable tools in the data warehouses and business intelligence space. In 2007, Strategia, a master data management tool configured and deployed via a web application built on SQL Server was acquired and was first seen under the Microsoft brand largely unchanged as the Bulldog project. 2008, built on the solid foundations of 2005, included features such as data profiling tasks within integration services. Profiling can allow you to begin to quantify aspects of data quality within a data set, number of rows, missing values, distinct values, etc. In 2008, uh, Zoomix, an accelerator software combining semantic and linguistic analysis to uh, classify, match and standardize data was acquired. Unfortunately, though, um, Zoomix didn't make it into the 2010 release. The strategy did in the guise of master data services, still primarily a web application. However, now we're on the cusp of SQL Server 2012. We can finally experience the combined clout of strategy as MDS and Zoomix in the guise of data, master, uh, sorry, data quality services. So what is new in MDS? It certainly hasn't been a revolution since the relatively recent release of R2, with some rationalization and improvement to both the web application and the loading of data capability, but not radically different. The real standout feature is the Excel add-in, allowing the maintenance of organizations' master data within the very familiar Excel environment. So let's take a look. I'm just going to give a very quick overview and I'm going to assume some level of understanding of MB MDS just so we can spend more time on DQS. As with most Excel add-ins, after the installation we'll get a new tab in the ribbon. I'll just open up this sp uh, spreadsheet as I'll be using it later. And as we can see, we have a master data um, tab on our ribbon. So to get started, I'm going to connect to an MDS server. I only have the one configured, which I will connect to. And once I'm connected, the Master Data Explorer will appear in Excel, in which I can select, select an MDS model and a model version. And very quickly, I can double click on product, one of my entities within this model, and the values will be returned um, into the Excel spreadsheet. And very quickly, I can start adding values, such as road lights, give it a product code, and assign it to a subcategory. Now, unfortunately, at this point in time, we're only able to assign based on the code of a domain for those who um, have a good appreciation of MDS. Although we can show the, uh, the, the entity's um, description next to it. So hopefully that feature will get uh, ironed out very quickly. So what else can we do within uh, Excel? We can look at the status. So here we can begin to see that a row has changed, obviously the row I've just added. And we can also see that it's not being validated. So to validate it, I can apply my model rules just by clicking and now we can get to see that it's uh, succeeded and uh, passed all the necessary rules that have been put in place within our MDS model. And now, if I wanted to, I could publish those changes back to the MDS server, at which point I get the opportunity to add any annotation I may wish to against a particular change I've made. So let's publish that back. Over back in the uh, Explorer, I can click on the filter. And this allows me to filter the data I'm looking at. So for product, uh, I could perhaps look at my attribute group of characteristics. Or alternatively, I could just let go back to all my attributes and I could click on subcategory and I could add a filter on subcategory. So again, selecting from the codes, I can limit my uh, uh, view within the uh, spreadsheet 
by clicking the load button just down to those that belong to the subcategory of 51. Okay, um, now let's have a look at subcategory. So subcategory has an explicit hierarchy within it. And if I go back into the filter, I can choose between looking at the leaf members or the consolidated members. So I can select consolidated, can click OK, and I can click load. And here I'm looking at the consolidated members within my hierarchy. So we're able to manage the consolidated members, although not their relationships. So explicit hierarchies aren't fully supported. However, we are able to manage attributes and hence derived hierarchies can be maintained. There's also one more feature to quickly highlight, create entity. Selecting a range of data, I can very quickly create a new entity um, from within Excel. And in fact, I can use that to populate an existing attribute of my product entity. So I have some <coughs> information here, which uh, is around size. And if I highlight that, uh, I can click entity. Uh, create entity sorry I can choose which model I wish to create my entity within and which version I can give it a name uh, I can then map my data so I, I had, didn't include my uh, heading and so it's obviously defaulted to um, the value small there in terms of a heading for code just click OK and fingers crossed we've created a new entity within our MDS model called size. Now, of course, if we go back to the data, we could see there was a number of duplicates within that. Um, so I can very quickly just clean up my data by highlighting and clicking the delete row. And do that for these multiple rows here. So, I now have a domain which if I just publish that, sorry, an entity, and if I just publish that again, just clean that up. Now if I go back to product, it will just ask me to reload the data. Here we go. And I actually already have an attribute in product called size. But if I look at the attribute properties, it's currently just a text field. But I can again amend my model and choose to link it to a domain set of values by selecting size as my new entity, which is going to drive this attribute column within uh, my product entity. So now I can actually select the values I've just loaded. Okay, we'll leave Excel for now. Hopefully we'll come back um, to have a look at MDS and its integration with DQS right at the end. So finally at the main event, DQS. As we said at the top, this is all about the provision of quality data and enabling both data stewards and IT professionals alike to be able to assist in its provision. Fundamentally, DQS consists of three key areas. First, it is a service that can be accessed from a dedicated data quality client, but then it can also be joined into integration services and MDS processes, automated and manually, uh, respectively. But what is it? The key concept to understand is that of the knowledge base. So a knowledge base holds knowledge about the data. This knowledge is used to perform data cleansing and the knowledge can build and continuously improve. When not building and maintaining knowledge bases, this knowledge base will be exploited and applied to data through the data quality projects. Knowledge bases are built on domains. In nearly everything we do, a domain will relate to a field or a column. So a domain could represent surnames, size of products, countries, for example. To start with, the domain may simply contain a list of valid or invalid values. In addition, we could define a rule so that the validity of new values discovered can be assessed. We also might know of terms that have changed, so perhaps a tall cup of coffee was once called small, and we would like to do a global replace whenever we detect the term small and map this to tall. 
Or perhaps there is a third party who is collecting and maintaining reference data that could help add further knowledge to our domain. Well, an Azure data service can be consumed by a domain, so that this so that perhaps some um, valid postcodes could be included, but without the maintenance of this um, being needed to be undertaken by ourselves, and we can simply consume the service. These concepts, along with our ability to acquire knowledge through the interactive discovery using real data, means that we can build very powerful knowledge bases that contain any number of domains. This knowledge can be used to um, both cleanse data, enriching it, and so that then we can match data identifying duplicate rows. With the knowledge bases, we define rules for how the similar rows will be identified. With all this knowledge and understanding captured, we can then apply it through data quality client, either through a project that allows us to cleanse and enrich the data, reviewing it before potentially exporting it, or we can match data identifying similar rows and determine which rows we will discard. 